Hi, in this video I want to show you how to make an H-bridge in MATLAB Simulink. Now there are different ways of making an H-bridge. You can actually assemble the switches yourself, um, but what I'm going to do is to use existing H-bridge blocks from the Simulink library. So first I collect all the components that I need uh, and put them into this um, blank uh, model, and then we see how to assemble them together. So first thing we need is a power GUI and also edge bridge. So you can see there are different options when you search edge bridge in the library. One of them is for um, a motor driver. These two, I don't know. These two are edge bridges for modular multilever converter. One of them comes with the internal capacitor source and one of them has the external source. So I'm going to use the one which has the external source. So we need a square pulse maybe. No. A square wave. And also voltage source. There's a DC voltage source. Then we need So we need a PWM generator and uh, here what I'm going to, there are many options will appear here. What I'm going to use is the PWM generator for multi-level converters. Of course, in this case, we're going to use only one, one H bridge, one level H bridge. So we will adjust this one to be, to only produce pulses for one level. What else do we want? So we have the input, this is the pulsar, time delay, data conversion, we have the oscilloscope and uh, we have the DC source. Okay, so all the components are now available. So what we go we're going to do is that first we connect the DC source to this uh, H-bridge. So this is the input. Now if you double click on the H-bridge, there, there are different options here. So for example, we have the switching device, switching function, average model. In this case, I'm going to use switching device. And the number of uh, submodules is only one. So we, we have one H bridge, one level H bridge. And then here we connect the load. So in this case, I'm going to, the load, I'm going to have only a resistor. And let's rotate this. Okay, so this is the load and here I'm going to connect the voltage measurement of the load. Okay, so now for the pulses, we have to basically, this is the signal generator, which uh, here I put the frequency, let's say we want to produce a pulse of uh, 50 Hertz. So I set the frequency to 50 Hertz. And this pulse at this moment is a square pulse. And then PWM generator, basically uh, the different options. Here we have a full bridge, um, and then the number of um, models, the number of bridges is only one. 
and then of course you have the carrier frequency is in this case is 540 Hertz so basically we have this reference signal and uh, within this block it compares it with the carrier frequency with the carrier signal and then produces the PWM signal at the output I just connect this one to here and maybe we set the time to smaller values 0 0.2 seconds only so if we run this of course you can see that we can produce the uh, 50 Hertz signal at the output of this uh, H bridge um, because the input the reference signal was a 50 Hertz uh, square wave what we can notice is that during the transition so let me focus on this you can see that um, for example when these two switches are on we have 100 volts this input is 100 volts 100 volts at the output and immediately after that these two switches will be turned off and then the other two switches will turn on so we will have minus um, 100 volts on the output but this transition happens at, the, at an instant which is not acceptable because in reality sometimes it happens that all these switches can be turned on at the same time in this in this region which what happens is that basically we create a short circuit um, in this region and it will destroy our switches so what we need is actually we have to first turn off these two switches and then wait a little bit and then turn on the other two switches so that is uh, that is basically a time delay so that is why I have this block here so now I'm going to put this block and then set a time delay of maybe 500 nanosecond okay so this time um, this block actually produces um, a different data type so we have to convert the output of this to proper data type so that is why we convert the output with this um, block and basically you have to select double here so now what happens is that uh, here we have the reference signal here is the comparison between reference signal and the carrier signal and then we have the PWM signal whenever the any any data goes up then there will be a little bit of delay and then here the data conversion it comes to the uh, to the gate pulse of this uh, H bridge now here we actually produce a, we have to produce four signals uh, for four switches that uh, that are here but this is something that I will cover in another video so let us run this one right now Obviously, you will get the same um, pulse as before, but if I right now if I zoom on this, you notice that um, there would be a little bit of uh, delay. So these these two switches would turn off. Uh, as you can see, they turn off at uh, exactly 0 0.02, which is 50 hertz, um, and then there would be a little bit of time delay, and then the other two switches would turn on. So this avoids creating short circuit on the switches okay so now this is basically um, when we have a square wave as the input uh, input signal so now let me I change this square wave to a sine wave so now imagine that we have a sine wave as the reference signal and of course if you run the simulation we see that we have produced the PWM signal at the output of this H bridge so as you can see this is the this is the signal that comes out of the the H bridge we can actually what we can do we can add a, a filter here to basically smoothen this signal and create a real sine wave at the output um, so maybe to to produce a, a very simple filter <clears throat> because now we have a carrier frequency of uh, 540 maybe as a first approximation this is just a simple filter design maybe um, what we can do we can set the cutoff frequency as something like um, this one which is basically give us so we have a 10 comes out and then here we have a 5 also so this is basically then 5 if we take 5 it's 10.8 and the square root of 10.8 give us uh, maybe 3.2 so this is approximately 160 Hertz so that is basically the cutoff frequency um, and now of course we can we can say that cutoff frequency is um, which from this we can see that uh, square root of LC will be 2 pi multiplied to, to FC and that that gives us in this case approximately maybe thousand um, 
it's 1 over 1000 and then so LC will be 10 to the minus 6 and so we can decide which L and which C I want to use uh, for this um, filter let's say we take uh, 50 milli Henry and uh, 20 microfarad here maybe I don't know these are the these are some parameters just to consider so I am going to create this filter right now maybe I paste this and rotate it so this is for example fifty I just put a little bit of resistance also so fifty so this one comes here and also another one which I have to make a capacitor let's say this is also 20 microfarad which I put it here and maybe I put another voltage source at this point to measure the the output of this bridge So if you run the simulation right now, well, this one, okay, so maybe, maybe this resistance is one ohm, that's why the magnitude, if we select a, a little bit higher resistance here, what you can see is that uh, basically we have the PWM signal and also we have this uh, the sine wave, uh, maybe I add this legend here. So basically what we have here is the, is the PWM signal right after the H bridge, the blue one, and then after the filter we have the sine wave. Now of course still you can see that this sine wave is not very perfect, it has some uh, notches on that maybe to improve the quality of this sine wave we can um, change the filter or maybe I can increase the switching frequency a little bit this time is too long so 0 0.1 okay so basically here we have the the final results this blue one is the output of the H bridge at this point and the yellow one is um, after the filter on the load side. So this is how we can use um, an H bridge and basically control it in MATLAB Simulink. In the next video I will show you how to make a cascaded multi-level um, H bridge um, and then we will also look a little bit closer at the gate signal that is produced here and is inserted to the, to the H bridge. Bye.